Okay, um, I'm going to um, talk about uh, two, two projects um, today. Um, one, is, um, one is King's Cross, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. Um, and uh, I, think, I think it does, uh, it is a project that kind of really does um, uh, showcase the idea of moving um, beyond uh, a station as a people processing machine. Um, and also Sloan Street, which is a project that we've been working on um, with, with Space Syntax over the last uh, few months um, with some, some similar, similar issues. Um, I'm a landscape architect um, by trade and um, fortunate enough to work on quite a, a number of um, transport related projects, um, stations, often with streetscape and public realm um, associated with them, um, including uh, a number of uh, crossrail stations which we've just been talking about, um, which have been, been great actually. Um, not all of, them, all of them as glamorous as, uh, as, as King's Cross. This is um, Euston Circus at the northern end of Tottenham Court Road, uh, which was a, a absolutely well, a terrible, terrible junction uh, for pedestrians negotiating their way from Warren Street towards uh, Euston Square. And this is this scheme is is nearly um, nearly complete, um, and it, uh, with some fairly simple interventions um, on the surface. Uh, the legibility of the space is much improved, um, and, and we have had managed to sort of create some um, spaces that people can actually dwell in um, and meet. Uh, but it's never simple, and I, I think the lessons I've learned from from these types of projects how complex they are, and there's there's a complexity of um, uh, the technical complexity of the projects. Um, Euston Euston uh, Circus, even the idea of planting uh, trees was turned out a bit like brain surgery, trying to find somewhere where you could actually put them amongst all the below ground uh, infrastructure. Um, and the other element um, which is common to all these projects is the, is the degree of collaboration um, and the people you need to work with. These spaces, are, these are democratic spaces that we're dealing with and uh, there are many different interested parties and their views need to be heard. Um, so it, it's, it's never easy and, and any of these projects could, could, um, could uh, involve any number of these, these um, organisations and and people. Um, and just one other observation before I move on to King's Cross. Uh, um, we quite often go to sites and say, what on earth did they do that for? Why did they design it like that? Um, and of course, often they didn't. Uh, it's, it's, it's the incremental change on sites which has such a major impact. Uh, and we find that uh, most of our projects now, we don't actually necessarily create anything brand new. Um, it, 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 it's as much about stripping back what's, what's there and, um, um, and happened over on site incrementally over time. Um, this is East Croydon, which we're working on uh, at the moment. Um, and it's, uh, it's not a great environment not, right now, but you know, years ago it, was, it, it probably was a, a space that uh, engaged um, people quite nicely. I think we're in a pretty good place right now. I think, um, I th I think you've heard, just been hearing about Crossrail, and I think that's a good example of how good design is really being supported, and we're looking beyond just the, uh, the, what you've referred to as the red line envelope of the station. Uh, there's a certain amount of investment, and I also think, equally important, there's a huge amount of confidence in the city, and people recognise, uh, I think it was uh, Yolan Barnes, who was um, at the last presentation, talked about how businesses and people are moving back to the city, um, you know, they're not no longer sort of moving out along the A4 corridor, people want to be in the city, um, and certainly at King's Cross, companies like Google are making it their head headquarters, and, and, the, and the stations and the streetscapes and the public spaces are vitally important. So, King's Cross Station, built in 1852, one of um, the Monopoly board stations, as we, we refer to them in the office, um, all of them built within a 20-year 20, 20 period, I think King's Cross was the third. Um, and the fantastic cubit facade, and obviously had the, the, the big concourse uh, out the front. Um, and uh, yeah, the station, as much a, a sort of a homage and an expression of the, the great industrial north as it was um, a gateway um, to, to London as, it, as it's really seen as now. Um, <clears throat> and things change, and, and uh, uh, over time, uh, capacities increase. I think it's 55 million people who pass through King's Cross Station uh, now. The uh, 1969 extension, of course, which everyone probably still remembers, fresh in the mind. Um, and this really probably was the definition of a people processing machine. Um, you know, it wasn't a very nice place to be in uh, at all. Um, and we were fortunate, fortunate enough to get involved with this, well, long before my time at John McAllison, and I think 15 years ago, I think this project started, and obviously um, King's Cross Station at the, at the southernmost edge of the uh, ambitious uh, King's Cross regeneration. And 
the project grew actually, and, and I think uh, we became involved in, in the complete renewal of, uh, of King's Cross Station, um, and crucially, um, the, the uh, uh, forecourt building at the front, built in 1969, was swept away, um, and this uh, Western Concourse built, which is crucially important, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. But uh, yeah, just the um, areas of the station that we've worked on, the Eastern Range, um, um, uh, on the eastern side of the building, uh, the main train shed, the cubit facade, the uh, western, um, western range uh, with Ticket Hall, uh, and the suburban train shed um, serving the outer areas of London. Uh, the public realm making the connection between um, King's Cross and St Pancras, the western concourse, and the Great Northern Hotel and the, and the, the, the square at the front. And, um, you know, a lot of the, the work is very well, where, varied from uh, refurbishment. This is the train shed uh, with a nice yellow polycarbonate uh, glazing. Um, and then after refurbishment with um, the public realm. The public realm, that we, it was very, very much treated as a continuous element that ran through from the station platform through the Western Concourse um, and out into the exterior. Um, uh, spaces. It was, a, it was seen, well, we, we saw it as a very uh, uh, sort of a contiguous uh, piece of uh, landscape um, and the uh, movement at the upper levels. There was some quite um, uh, intrusive work to, to the listed buildings. This is the, um, this is the uh, breakthrough from the Western, new Western Concourse into the uh, main train shed um, where we created access through um, from the western side of the building. And some of it's, you know, very, very um, um, uh, similar to what it was um, 100 years ago. This is the old parcel sorting office, which is uh, now a pub. But yeah, the Western Concourse is the um, is the main um, hub, if you like, which which has really enabled uh, the release of space for the public realm um, and centralisation of uh, of um, uh, sort of a meeting place within within King's Cross. This is the space. Um, before the Western Concourse was built, car parking, sheds, and the uh, rear side of the Northern Hotel. Um, and the creation of the, um, the, uh, the concourse, Western Concourse, um, it's 19 metres high, uh, contains restaurants, uh, restaurant facilities, bars, um, and it has become a real, a real meeting place. Um, um, and, and also, probably importantly, most importantly, it's, it's this place that everyone moves through when they come to King's Cross um, for arrivals and departures um, at, uh, between the various tra transport modes, underground, taxis, between the various stations. Um, and, and obviously that confluence of people means that um, uh, it becomes a very active hub. Um, and that, in turn, has released um, all the space in front of the building to the size of the building. Um, um, which are, are now a, a, new, a new public space um, for, for London, uh, new taxi ranking facilities, uh, an open uh, environment fronting the streets, and of course the, um, the Stanton Williams designed uh, public square at the, at the front. So that was uh, King's Cross. Um, and I'm just going to talk briefly about Sloan Street, which is a collaboration that we've had with um, Space Syntax. It's been, uh, it's, been, it's been great, quite a revelation in terms of um, what um, space syntax can bring to a project. Um, I don't know how many of you know Sloan Street. It was not somewhere I frequented very much before this project, but it's quite, uh, quite an interesting street. Uh, Knightsbridge um, to the north, Sloan Street to the south, um, and then something in, in the middle. On the face of it, a very, um, you know, it's, it's a globally renowned, um, prestigious, exclusive street. But when you, when you start to peel back the layers and you start to have a look, it's actually a very underperforming street. Um, quite poor public round, poor services, poor street furniture, uh, carriageway suspiciously wider than it perhaps needs to be. Um, but more than that um, is the problem with connectivity, which the client, Cadogan Estates, wanted us to look at, which um, uh, if you have been to Sloan Street, I probably guarantee that you've either explored the northern end or you've explored the southern end, but you've never made the journey between the northern and the southern end, um, which is a shame because we have two uh, major retail uh, centres. Um, and part of the problem is that it's, um, it's, it's retail at the north, it's retail at the south, and it's, it's heavily um, 
residential in the middle and we were struggling with that and space syntax kind of helped us to understand um, some ideas about permeability and, uh, and the way that people can move through the spaces, confluences of people and how we could start to, to look at that to sort of increase activity um, along, along the street. And a lot of the problems stem from the original historic uh, nature. It was Knightsbridge and Sloan Square were originally two villages and it's speculative housing developed in between that's filled the gap. Um, so you end up with sort of this dumbbell of a street with, with retail at either ends and, and not much happening in the middle. There's really nothing to attract people um, from one end to the other. Um, and this is just one diagram which Space Syntax produced for us. There are many more, but um, what uh, I think the, the, the core benefit really was that we started to understand and actually we worked very closely together, but we started to understand that um, uh, what, what pedestrian movement patterns meant and where the real opportunities lay um, that we could confidently, I think that's one of the key things, we could confidently uh, suggest to the client they could start um, changing their, uh, the way they use their, their buildings and the land uh, to encourage movement. So we started um, this process of, of, of what we call um, urban acupuncture, where we're starting to uh, find the best um, places according to the movement patterns, which I haven't got the diagrams here, but according to the movement patterns, where we can start to look at sort of inserting uh, new uses, restaurant facilities, and re uh, restaurant facilities in particular, because we wanted to bring um, a an, an sort of new life to the street, which um, isn't really there at the moment. Um, and ultimately, to, to, to hopefully create um, uh, a series of centres along the street rather than two centres but things happening along the course of the street, so we end up with a, um, a, a vibrant um, street that can um, attract people along its full length. Um, we have to be careful. We want to retain the character of Sloane Street, we don't turn it to Oxford Street, um, but it's more this than what's there at the moment. That's it. Okay. Thank you.